So, to be completely, you know, forthcoming as far as uh, this election coming up, I mean, I'm kind of leaning toward voting for the Democratic Party, like, almost entirely down ballot unless there's, like, some good independents, you know, I could switch it up with. Um, um, but I have some serious issues with the Democratic Party, especially as it is, because I'm a progressive. Um, you know, I am a, uh, I guess, I guess I'll call myself a Christian capitalist, although, I don't know, I mean, I have a lot of socialist tendencies, even though, you know, I am a religious person, you know, I, and um, I don't really see the Democratic Party, you know, holding on to any of my values on top of their, you know, being pretty aged. I mean, like, let's talk about the Democratic Party for a second. Like, like what's your thoughts on that institution? Well, as a <clears throat> private political union, which is what the political parties are, the leadership of the Democratic National Party has pretty much stayed the same. The people that are in power, like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, um, they have been in power for a considerable length of time. And when we talk about generational trends, uh, the younger folk tend to um, be more on the Bernie Sanders side of the political spectrum, at least as far as the Democrats are concerned. And they seem to be fighting tooth and nail the progressive left wing of the Democratic Party. And I'm beginning to see the writing on the walls in that I truly believe the Democratic Party would rather have white suburban voters in their party as opposed to minorities. Um, I, mean, I think you have a point there. I mean, you know, when I consider the Democratic, leg the Democratic, you know, drafted legislation, most of which is passed, I mean, you know, the poor people, the minorities, the downtrodden, if you will, whichever demographic you choose, we're often, you know what I'm saying, invited to come under this, uh, you know, Democrat tent, you know, we're all here for each other, but then, of course, the legislation that gets passed is largely caters to, you know, white suburbanites, people who are already well off, you know, the corporations, war, of course, Democrats have, you know, or, or uh, they're, they're no less hesitant to go to war than the Republicans are. So, I mean... Well, it's a, an interesting fact that, you know, President Trump was one of the first presidents in recent memory that hasn't ordered our troops, our boys and women, into harm's way in another war. Bush I mean, had, to, to be fair, he hasn't started a new war, this is true. I mean, look, I don't think it serves you, you or me, any purpose to be a hypocrite, and we have to give the devil his due. And Trump has not sent our troops into another foreign war. This is true. And he's tried to get us out of Syria and Afghanistan, and um, you know, I look. I know the man's got problems, and he. A lot of you out there think he's, you know, the devil himself, but. You know, I want to point out that he, that in order for my critique of the world to make any sense and to be valid, I have to say when one side does well, so that when I say the other side does well, it has some meaning to it. But um, you know, when when Trump got rid of the um, the fine for not having insurance. That directly impacted me. It saved me $1,000 a year because I cannot afford insurance. And <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I definitely benefited from that. You know, um, personal example, you know, when 
like when uh, the ACA, the American Care, the Affordable Care Act, was first being crafted, you know, we were, we were given this pie in the sky talk about like, oh, there's going to be a public option, or oh, my favorite line ever, you know, um, you know your health care is going to be as cheap as a phone bill. Now, my phone bill is 60 bucks. Uh, when, it, when, when the rubber hit the road, though, um, and I and I went to that health healthcare marketplace for the first time. The cheapest uh, healthcare plan I could get was uh, about two hundred dollars a month with a uh, five thousand dollar deductible. I'm like, dang! I'm like, well, I might as well be paying out of pocket for everything anyway. And uh, shoot, I don't. I, I mean, it was cheaper for me to take the fine, you know, as opposed to pay for healthcare. I couldn't afford that at the time. And you know, by Donald Trump having the courts to strike down uh, the fine for the individual mandate, that, I mean, that actually did me some good. So, but, it, and, and so to the point about like, all right, right, Trump, of course, is a horrible human being. I think most people would agree on that. It's just that, you know, this whole idea that, all right, blue no matter who, and it's like, why? And why does it have to be that way? Because when I think about the last time the Democrats had, you know, full control of, say, the White House and Congress, that was what, in, that was from 2008 to 2010, when, a, when Barack Obama was president, his first term, actually. That could have been one of the most dynamic two years in American policymaking, right? We could have had universal health care. We could have had protections for all these people that were about to be thrown out. We could have had, you know, like hardcore bank reform. We could have, you know, drawn down the wars. You know what I'm saying? We could have pared down the surveillance state. We, 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 we could have, you know, used the Justice Department to clamp down on hate groups. All these things that Barack Obama sold us on. And in two years, did, did any of that happen? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think any of those things happened. Like, the bankers definitely didn't go to jail, and the poor people definitely got put out in the streets, and we definitely didn't get health care until the Republicans came in, and then before the Democrats had an excuse to say, oh, the Republicans ruined our great health care plan. And so I'm just really not excited, you know what I'm saying? I... Fool me once, shame on me, fool me, or fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, you know? And the... It is a very valid point to bring up that 10 years ago, we had a similar situation as far as where our economy was, is that after the fiasco of the housing, the, the lending, you know, mm -hmm. the lending fiasco, over 3 million homes were foreclosed on and those people were booted right on out. And the economy crashed, millions of people, tens of millions of people lost their jobs. And what did the Democrats do? Nothing. There was nothing done to help these people. And now Nancy Pelosi is trying to convince the poor folk who she's asking to vote for, her and the Democratic Party, that she's going to bail us out in January. And I just don't think she is. I don't think Biden and the Democrats have any plan whatsoever come January to pass a bill. Because, my brothers and sisters, you should be aware of the fact that if the Democrats sweep and it's a total blowout, the Republicans, including Trump, are not going to pass anything to help the people that threw them out. No. They're not going to do it. So now we're at the middle of January. And then Biden's already starting to say the word deficit. Deficit. Which means that cuts. there's not cuts. going to be... Well, no, I mean, well, I'm sure there will be cuts. But as far as this whole notion that you know we're going to get an extra $600 for unemployment insurance and that we're going to get another stimulus check, that old man is going to look into the camera and be like, we can't afford it. And then another three million people are going to get thrown out of their houses. The banks are going to then buy their houses back at dirt cheap freaking prices. 
and continue to give the Democrats just like a ton of money. Just like what happened last time. There's just not... like what happened last time. And, and by the way, you, you mentioned Nancy Pelosi. Like, you know, when it came to the whole, I, 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 dare, I dare say, the, the rape of, you know, I'm saying, lower class America, you know, lower income America, all right, Nancy Pelosi was there for that. Chuck Schumer, he was there for that. A lot of these Democrats were, you know, who, who were supposed to trust to save us from Trump and the Republicans, they were there for that and oversaw that whole process and stood by and watched people get decimated, you know. And then who did they blame? They blamed Bush and the Republicans. So this is just a political football. One side blames the other, that side blames the other. And then they switch roles in, in the presidency, and then they sit and point, and yet they're all in, in the back room together laughing at us. And be like, well, they're going to fall for this again. And, and speaking of who was there for that first time around 10 years ago, you know who else was there for that? The donors. The same, you know, few hundred really, really influential billionaire donors who have been donating to the Democratic Party you know, ever since the Reagan era. And these people, and, and, and all the Nancy Pelosi's and Chuck Schumer's of Congress, all those folks, and, and, and on the Republican side too, because the donors dabble on both sides, let's not get that twisted. And these people have stayed the same, and so if the people that have been buying the politicians have stayed the same for decades, and of course the politicians that they've been buying have been there for decades, what on earth, why on earth should I expect those people to behave any differently? Their, their patrons have not changed, the politicians have not changed, therefore their policies are not, will, will not have changed. They're going to say whatever they need to do to get you to believe that they care about you, to get them into office, and then they're going to continue serving their patrons because that's what they've been doing. There's, there's no reason to believe that a politician who's been in office for decades doing the same thing and is old is going to just magically change the way they operate. They yeah, have an epiphany. Right. Yeah, and that's crazy. It's crazy talk to think that people are going to behave differently when, when they haven't for the last 40 years. You know, an, an interesting um, fact is that if you were to look at, well, let's call senior citizens if they're 65, mm -hmm. right? There are, are 100 senators, 48 of them are over 65. In the House of Representatives, there are 147 representatives over the age of 65. When you look at the governors, there are 15 of them over the age of 65. And don't get me wrong, I don't have an issue with anyone being a senior citizen and being in Congress or the president. What I do have an issue with is somebody over the age of 65 who's been in Congress for over 30 years. That is absolutely ridiculous. And as people age, we tend to become a little bit more conservative. And that is what's happened to the Democratic Party. It is becoming the party of senior citizens. And it is my belief from all of the actions that Biden, oh, I beat the socialist and Nancy Pelosi, you know, a, uh, the, the Speaker of the House from San Francisco and Chuck Schumer, the leader of the Senate Democrats who's from New York, that these people are in any way going to help poor people because they need us to clean their toilets. And so the whole notion that there's some big stimulus check going to come from Biden and Pelosi and Schumer is absolutely outrageous. It's not going to happen. So I'm going to say to you, the voter, I'm not saying don't vote for the Democrats, but just know that when you vote for the Democrats, you are guaranteeing that you will not get Medicare for all. You will not get legalized cannabis. You will not get a higher minimum wage. They're not going to bring anybody home. They're going to continue to um, prosecute Julian Assange. They are going to wipe out any entitlements that poor people rely on. Because they, of course they would. 
These people are taking huge amounts of money from the banking industry, the pharmaceutical industry, you name it, the Democrats are taking the money. And regrettably, they're not saying no to their donors. You know why? Because they are their donors. They're members of the same country clubs, they're members of the same churches, they're members of the same, they live in the same neighborhoods, they go to the same vacation spots. They are not going to vote against their own interests. So.